What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we're going to take a look at the October 18th episode of Impact, the fallout from Bound for Glory. Uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty good episode. At first when I finished the show, I was like, yeah, it was all right. And then I read through my notes. And I was like, oh, there was a decent amount of good stuff that happened. Uh, we're definitely building post Bound for Glory. Seems like a lot of the feuds that were going into Bound for Glory are over with. However, we still have some continuing and uh, it seems like we have some new ones going on. So, open the show, obviously, with a recap of Bound for Glory. If you haven't checked out my review from Bound for Glory, you can do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen. Um, but we have Johnny Impact kick off the show, obviously, with a champion's address, so to speak. Um, I thought it was a pretty good promo from Johnny. Uh, not his normal, nobody got called a turd cutter or anything like that. It was just a prototypical babyface promo which Johnny Impact kind of fits that role perfectly it definitely got a good response from the crowd uh, he says obviously he is the guy now in Impact Wrestling he kind of runs down Austin Aries tells the crowd that he's going to be the opposite of what he was as champion you know he'll give the shot or a shot at the championship to anyone who deserves it this brings out Ray Phoenix he comes out in street clothes and the mask on it was just a different look um Phoenix obviously congratulates Johnny since they are friends. Phoenix says that he has won championships all over the world. However, he has never won one in Impact Wrestling. So he wants an opportunity next week against Johnny Impact. Johnny Impact says okay. And uh, we have a title match set for next week's episode of Impact, which should be a fantastic match. Uh, both these men are very capable of putting on a good show. And I did hear reviews of the match um, no spoilers from the uh, set of tapings, which was good, much like uh, the set of tapings in Mexico where very little was coming out. Um, we got maybe one or two things that popped up, just a debut, which they talked about throughout the show. So it really wasn't any huge news um, and, you know, just a couple matches that happened, but no results. But yeah, this looks to be a fantastic main event for next week's episode. Um, and yeah, so that was a good way to kick off the show. But they were referencing Austin Aries a lot, so not sure still what to make of the situation. But I don't know. There's no point in really speculating. But it seems like Aries is done with the company, at least for the time being now. So Johnny is our man. So that's all we can uh, really focus on. Obviously, it was confirmed that Impact is moving to 10 p.m. next Thursday. They are going with Impact After Dark. I don't know if this is really anything different. If it's going to be a little more edgier or something like that, since it is out of the primetime television spot. Hopefully this was just to, you know, kind of combat NFL, so we don't have to worry about them going up head-to-head. -head. But it more or less seems like uh, they're not re-upping with Pop. But, you know, we will see. We will see when uh, that information comes to light, because their contract runs through December 31st. So they still have two months to figure it out. But uh, I guess... We'll just have to deal with Impact at 10 p.m. from now on. Uh, so we go backstage, and McKenzie is interviewing Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer runs down Moose. He challenges him to a match, and then he threatens to wrap a chair around Moose's head, giving him a concussion. Um, obviously, he's like, I'm not always politically correct because, you know, concussions shouldn't happen in this day and age. But it, it was a, a decent promo by Tommy Dreamer. Um, then we go, or actually, I think we're outside of the arena where Mackenzie catches up with Moose and Killer Cross, and uh, Moose obviously accepts Dreamer's challenge, and then Killer Cross kind of stops him and says that they accept the challenge. Tommy isn't the one that makes the rules here. So it's definitely interesting to see how Moose and Killer Cross will do on their own, which we will see them later on in the evening. Then we have our first matchup of the night, and this was Taya versus Katarina. Um, obviously the big thing here, and... Josh Don spoke about it on commentary was the whole ring skirt incident. So not a surprise. I figured that was going to be a talking point. It made sense coming out of the match from Sunday at Bound for Glory. But this was overall a pretty standard match. Katarina did get a good amount of offense in throughout the match, but obviously Taya went over with the road to Valhalla. Uh, then McKenzie interviews her after the match, and obviously she brings up the whole ring skirt thing. Ty is obviously disappointed that Tessa had to resort to this, but I guess kind of felt good in the same way that Tessa is considered one of the best in the world, and obviously Taya took her to her limits. 
Um, but she says she used to respect Tessa. However, after the whole thing on Sunday, she no longer feels that way. So like I had said in my Bound for Glory review, I kind of expected this feud to continue, obviously using that little spot there to continue it. But we will actually get a feud from them rather than the build that came at Bound for Glory, which was it, it was very lackluster. So we will get a correct feud here. Good to see there. Um, then we have Ethan Page and Matt Seidel backstage. Uh, Seidel tells Ethan that tonight he will show Trevor Lee how to open his third eye. Um, I, I just like the little back and forth between Ethan and Matt Seidel. It's, it, it's just something different. We're seeing Matt Seidel interact with a partner now rather than him being by himself with the whole third eye gimmick. Uh, at the end, I think uh, Ethan Page was trying to cross his legs like Seidel does, and he was kind of looking at him, trying to figure out. It was just a little, a good little spot. Uh, then we, I guess we're going up to the uh, top floor of the Melrose Ballroom. I guess it's outside, and uh, we see Gama Singh come out with broom in hand. I think he broke it over Rohit Raju. Um, Gama yells at him, tells him that he beat the, or he accomplished the first test. Now he has to pass the next test next week. And, uh, he's going to take on Gama Singh himself. So we have Rohit versus Gama next week. Um, uh, that should be interesting. I wonder if this is where we'll see some new members, but who knows? Definitely an interesting matchup. Uh, then we have Ethan Page versus Trevor Lee. Uh, interesting. We have a heel versus heel match. I don't think it happens as often as, uh, as a regular face versus heel match happens, generally they don't do this too much. I mean, we see face versus face, but generally in just the uh, the way of competition. But heel versus heel doesn't often happen, uh, so that was kind of interesting to see. We did get a "Let's Go Ego" Trevor Lee chant going on, so that was good. Um, obviously, Josh and Don spotlight Trevor Lee and his losing ways. So I would assume this is eventually going to come to something. Uh, Matt Seidel was yelling at Trevor Lee on the outside, telling him he can join them. Uh, but they put on a good back and forth match for at least for TV. Um, really impressed with what I've seen from Ethan Page so far in Impact. And granted, this is only his second match, but Jeff, definitely a fresh fresh face that's come in. Uh, Trevor got a near fall with and a very nice moonsault from the top, but Page puts him away with the spinning Dwayne, which I guess his uh, variation of the rock bottom. Um, we go backstage, and Mackenzie is interviewing Rich Swan. Willie Mack is also with him. Swan says he will not be held down, and Brian Cage will be in for the fight of his life. Uh, Willie Mack was on the microphone a little bit. Uh, he kind of told Swan that he was going to have to do it on his own, but he will be backstage watching. Uh, again, like I said, Willie spoke on the mic for a little bit. I just liked his uh, presence. Looked good. I'm glad that he is a part of the Impact roster, and I think there was news coming out that he is going to be a regular moving forward, so that's fantastic news to hear. Uh, we get a segment with Allie and Kiara Hogan backstage. Uh, Kiara kind of walks up to Allie. I guess she was just kind of sitting on a couch or a chair, and uh, she says that she hasn't heard from Allie in a few days. She wanted to make sure everything is okay. Allie obviously says everything is fine. We notice that she is sporting black hair now. And I think Allie asked Kiara if she was going to be at ringside for her tonight, which Kiara says she will. Uh, then we get the GWN flashback, Eric Young versus Magnus. This is when Eric Young won the championship for the first time. Again, another flashback that they cut down. So, it is what it is. Uh, then we have a segment with Petey Williams and Scarlett Bordeaux backstage. Petey obviously thinks he has impressed Scarlett after his victory in the Fatal 4-Way last week. However, Scarlett says that the talent search is open to everyone, not just wrestlers. Tells him to send her a video and to try again. So that was that. Now we had Killer Cross with Moose versus Tommy Dreamer. Um, yeah, I guess this is going to continue. Uh, I think they made mention that Eddie Edwards was not here tonight. So I guess after everything that took... I guess it was after the powerbomb on the apron from Cross and Moose last Sunday... Uh, but Tommy Dreamer got some offense in early. Action went outside. Uh, Cross hit Tommy with an atomic drop onto the uh, guardrail. Uh, Moose got involved, obviously attacking Dreamer from behind the ref's back. Dreamer gets kendo stick, takes out Moose inside the ring. Uh, I think at this point, uh, Cross set him up for a Saito suplex, and Dreamer started biting uh, down on Killer Cross's head. 
Cross ends up hitting him with two Doomsday Saito suplexes. Dreamers out cold. Ref calls, rings for the bell. Moose hits a spear on him after the match. They obviously stand tall. Refs come out to check on Tommy. Um, I don't know. I, I was kind of hoping that Tommy wasn't going to be a spotlight. I mean, there's so many guys I guess they could have given this spot to. Just, you know, they could have just used Tommy to get beat down, have a face come out, save Tommy Dreamer. You kind of take Dreamer out of the equation because he's hurt. And then now this face could have teamed with Edwards against Moose and Cross, but I don't know. It just seemed like the crowd wasn't super into this. I definitely think that right now, um, with everything that happened with Aries leaving, Cross and Moose have kind of lost, I don't know, a part of them. You can definitely tell. But I think just as time goes on, these two will be able to build themselves up as the main eventers they have or they are capable of being. Uh, then we got a recap of Abyss's Hall of Fame induction. Very good stuff. Uh, then we go backstage and McKenzie's interviewing Eli Drake after what happened to Bound for Glory. Eli first talks about LaParka going after him with a chair. And then Abyss being put, putting him through a table. And then the concrete jungle death match. And then he says that Impact Wrestling is an un, has become an unsafe work environment. And he says he is going to sue Impact because of it. So at this point, I was kind of confused. I was like, well, how are they going to do an impact wrestling versus or a worker versus the company angle when there's really no authority figure able to represent them? But then I was thinking, hmm, Abyss does play a character in Joseph Park, who is a lawyer. Perhaps he will be the one representing the company. I hope we uh, get like a little backstage segment with uh, Joseph Park and Ethan Page where he goes, Chandler, is that you? And And then Ethan's like, no, I'm Ethan Page. I have no idea who you're talking about. I, I just like when they they uh, poke fun at themselves with things like that. But I would assume this is probably going to be Eli Drake versus Abyss or Joseph Park in this instance. But I guess we will have to wait and find out. Hopefully this does something for Eli because he's kind of been floundering lately. And then after the events that took place on Sunday, it just seemed like they still didn't know what to do with Eli. Uh, then we see LAX celebrating. They were at the bar area in the Melrose Ballroom. King and the OGs walk up. King says they've met with the bosses. And basically the OGs and LAX kind of have each have their own part of New York. And they have to stay on their own side. Conan says, well, this is our side, so you guys get the hell out of here. Uh, then we have Ali versus Alicia. Um, Alicia obviously playing the, uh, I, I guess she was playing the face role. Um, to start off, but she got a decent amount of offense in. Uh, she started choking Allie out in the corner. Allie started, uh, she was able to get out of it. She starts slapping herself, uh, looking like she's resorting to the dark side. Uh, she eventually puts Alicia away with a nasty looking code breaker. And then after the match, she starts beating down Alicia. Um, and then Kiara kind of knocks her off Alicia and kind of gets her out of the, uh, I guess, I don't know, the dark side, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I, I really liked this. I thought Allie did a really good job portraying, you know, going back and forth because uh, it was obviously very different looking facial expressions and things like that. So I like what they're going for here. It gives Allie definitely some more um, depth to her character. And uh, this will probably lead to eventually Allie versus a returning uh, Rosemary. So... Good stuff there, but pretty standard match for TV. Obviously, this was just meant to uh, bring out the dark side and Allie or a little bit anyway, so I think they're going to be teasing her going back and forth between good and evil, so to speak, probably over the next coming months, and maybe maybe we'll uh, get that match at homecoming. Who knows? I'm just very early speculating. The first night of the tapings, and uh, we have a long way to go. So we get a little quick teaser for Jordan Grace. She made her debut on the set of tapings. Uh, huge news here, very young, very talented, um, and a fantastic addition to the Knockouts roster. She could be the one that potentially takes that title off of Tessa one day. Um, and that brings us to our main event, Rich Swan versus Brian Cage. Um, I was told about this match, or that this match had happened over the set of tapings, and everybody had high praise for it, and, uh, they were completely right. This was a fantastic main event, um, great to see. Good stuff from both men. Um, neither men had really complete control throughout the match. Uh, Swan went for a 
jumping senton off the ring apron to Cage on the outside. However, Cage caught him and powerbombed him into the ring post. Uh, nice looking spot. A lot of back and forth after they go in the ring. Cage hits a burning hammer. He gets a two count. Uh, Cage went up top. I think Rich went for a no hands Hurricane Rana, but Cage kind of like backed up. So uh, Swan missed. Cage went to jump at Rich Swan. He catch Rich Swan catches him with a cutter. Then he hits the handspring cutter and hits a 450 after that. Cage is just barely able to kick out before three. Swan goes up for a Phoenix Splash. He misses. Cage hits a power bomb and then a buckle bomb and then eventually Weapon X and he retains his championship. A very, very good match to main event the show. If uh, you guys didn't watch the show, I would definitely check out this match. I'm sure Impact will have it up on their YouTube page. Um, after the match, Sammy Callahan comes down. He gets in Brian Cage's face, points to the Tron. They show video of Callahan pinning Brian Cage on from Sunday. Um, so obviously, Sammy said, go one, two, three. Uh, they get into I think Sammy went to attack Cage. Cage ducks, hits him with a clothesline. Chris Brothers come out, try and make the save. Jake goes in the ring. Dave's obviously very cautious. He knows what's going on. Jake comes in, takes a drill claw from Brian Cage, and then we see uh, Dave and Sammy drag Jake to the back. So that was that. The show ended after that. Um, Callahan versus Brian Cage should be a very good feud. Um, this makes more sense now because it'll at least Sammy has the numbers game with him. Um, so that should make it for an interesting feud. No Pentagon Jr. on the show. Will be interesting to see what he does as we have next week. Uh, Phoenix has that championship match against Johnny Impact. Yeah, so we got some good things going forward. Um, as we're going to continue the Taya and uh, Tessa feud. We'll see. Hopefully Eli gets something going. I guess we're going to continue. I heard that... Uh, we did get a match between Moose and Eddie Edwards over the course of the tapings, and that was apparently a very, very good match. Um, yeah, so overall, good show. I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed Bound for Glory, too. But that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I don't know how next week is going to go with Impact moving to the 10 p.m. slot. Um, I'll probably maybe watch an hour Thursday and then maybe catch the second hour Friday afternoon then do my review Friday afternoon afterward. But... We will see. I will be back tomorrow with another edition of the Impact Report. We've got a bunch of news coming out of Bound for Glory. A lot of speculation. A lot of uh, websites spitting out bad news, which surprise, surprise there. So hope you guys enjoyed my review. Thanks for checking out my video. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.